Yeah, so as you guys probably know, like we have an integration with dbt core. Uh, right now that requires you to you know, capture the artifact files that the dbt run produces and then provide that to an ingestion recipe so that we can ingest that and put your metadata into data hub. Uh, we've heard a lot about people using dbt cloud. They don't have access to these artifacts and they still want to see all of that metadata. Um, and so we've gone ahead and built a connector for dbt cloud. Uh, it works largely the same way that the dbt core integration works. Um, you know, all of the things that you kind of know and love in the, in the DBT, in the DBT cloud connector, uh, or in the DBT connector are supported in the DBT cloud. Uh, so that's like meta mappings and, um, you know, filtering based on different types, adding things based on the query, um, based on the query tags, things like that. So with that I'll just like run through a very quick demo of what that looks like. If you could uh, kill the screen share and then I'll start it. Yep. Just uh, two. Yeah. So here's a DBT cloud instance. Um, I've gone ahead and like set up a, a job. All this job does is it just like, you know, generates the docs, runs the source, and then runs DBT build. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. And we've run it recently. And then if I switch over to my terminal, the config looks largely like very similar. All of the options that you like target platform, things like that are still supported. You just pass in the token and then the config of your account project. Um, I'm working on figuring out how to make the job and run ID optional. If you're running multiple jobs in your project, please holler at me on Slack. And I'd love to chat about like what you're doing, how we can support that effectively. Um, because we need to support like a patchwork of metadata coming in from different jobs or different DBT job runs. And then you just run data hub ingest nice and fast on this one. Um, you know, in two seconds, and then you get the same exact view that you're normally used to uh, with DBT in Data Hub, all of the lineage of all of your models and your sources and your seeds um, will show up and your you know, test results and things like that. So yeah, that's it for the demo. As I mentioned, this is coming. This I'd love to chat about if you're using multiple DBT runs, um, how that works and what we can do to support that. And this should be coming in, you know, by next, like end of this week or early next week, it will, it will hopefully get merged in. Awesome. So that was the DBD integration update. And we also wanted to give another cool update around integration with Databricks. So a quick recap on how Databricks in integration works today. Um, we already support integration with Hive, which is, you know, Databricks workspace URL. Um, and here's a recipe that allows you to connect to the Hive instance that runs in your Databricks uh, account. So we support that today. You can already use this to get metadata out from your Data Hub, uh, Databricks instance. Um, we recently announced integration with Delta Lake, um, and that's now an incubating source. So this allows you to connect to your Delta Lake uh, manifests directly. Uh, whether you're running within Databricks or outside. Um, and that's another uh, thing that is supported in terms of integration with the Databricks ecosystem. And then finally, uh, we also support integration with Spark uh, through a push-based engine. So you take our Spark agent, you run it as part of your Spark application, and it starts and it emits metadata out whenever uh, the job runs, uh, including data set to job and job to data set lineage. So these are all existing ways of integrating with the Databricks ecosystem. Uh, if you are uh, paying attention to Databricks, they recently announced Unity Catalog uh, at the Data and AI Summit, uh, which was, I think, a couple of months ago. And 
what Databricks is trying to do is provide a single you know, uh, access point where all of the uh, assets within a Databricks uh, ecosystem is uh, cataloged and governed. So that's basically li literally the sentence uh, from the Databricks website. There's a bunch of requirements um, that are uh, required before you can enable Unity Catalog. So this may or may not apply to you, but for the people who are using Unity Catalog already or planning to turn it on, um, we have news for you. We now support integration with Unity Catalog and Tamash is gonna walk us through what that looks like. There are obviously some limitations with Unity Catalog today, it's new technology and so, Databricks is continuously investing in it. And so I'm, I'm, I assume that these things are gonna get improved over time, but there are certain limitations with what it can do today. Logically, the way to think about it is you have a workspace within Databricks and you have a Unity catalog within it. And that uh, actually has multiple meta stores behind it. And you might have multiple workspaces across all your Databricks accounts. And this connector is gonna pull metadata out from all of these different workspaces, different Unity catalogs. Uh, it's pull-based and it's able to pull out tables, schemas, descriptions, table-to-table -table lineage and column-to-column -column lineage. With that, I'll hand it over to Tamash to do a quick demo. Uh, yeah, let me share my screen and I can, I can show you. Okay, let me just uh, quickly show what was my demo. The data. <clears throat> this is basically the, uh, the Databricks site, how you can create lineage information in Unity Catalog. Uh, so basically there is a, this uh, notebook where I just created some schema and some table and some uh, query uh, queries just to generate some lineage. And also there is some, I ran some Python, PySpark code as well. To, to creating tables as well. So in Unity Catalog, uh, how it looks like, basically you have uh, the Data Explorer, which is for one meta store. And in a meta store, you can have multiple catalogs. And in a catalog, you can have multiple schemas. And in uh, the schemas, you can have tables. And in table, you can see the columns and you can see the, like, the lineage information there. And you can even see like some kind of, uh, so if I just click here, you can see the lineage information, like the table lineage. And there is some way to check actually uh, the column lineage as well. So as you can see some this way. Okay, but how this looks like uh, with OR integration. So if you want to capture this information in Data Hub, the only thing what you need to do is using our uh, new soon to merged a Unity catalog uh, source, which looks uh, quite similar like any other source. Uh, as you can see here in the config, you can only uh, you you need uh, you only need to specify the Databricks uh, workspace URL and your Databricks token, and then you can uh, set up a, a couple of filters if you want, and and uh, you can add domains and and you can add, enable stateful ingestion as well, uh, and also if you if you want, you can enable column or table level lineage uh, to capture. Let me run this quickly. Uh, this recipe, actually uh, this runs and should load uh, the, the metadata from the Unity catalog. And as you can see, it's finished. It loaded some data and let's check it out in uh, Data Hub. So, let me refresh. Now, as, as you can see, I have a new platform and I have here my data sets in Databricks under this workspace and this meta store and this catalog. And here I have the lineage demo. And if I just click here, I can see my fields here. And I also, also capture the properties of the table. And you also can see the column level, uh, the table level lineage. And of course, if you just enable uh, the show columns, then you can see as well the column level lineage as well captured uh, in Data Hub. Uh, one, one thing to notice actually, so we, we uh, so there is an option to capture table level and column level lineage. Currently how it works, the, uh, the Databricks API, you, you need to run uh, one REST score for each of the column to get column level lineage. So it can be, 
expensive in some cases. So just be careful with that. Awesome. So let's keep That's moving. Um, so, so both of these connectors, DVT Cloud and Unity Catalog, are landing in the next day or two. Or so, basically by next week, you should have it showing up uh, in the Python clients. 